Hello and welcome to this webinar. Um, we're going to be looking at um, Autodesk Construction Cloud today. We're going to take a brief look at Docs and Build um, in this session. So I'd like to get started with just a bit of an overview of myself and my machine. So my name is Gareth Spencer. I'm going to be uh, your host today. I'm going to be talking about the Autodesk Construction Cloud. Um, we are going to be looking at um, a few key functionalities, but I'm going to explain this Construction Cloud in a whole. A bit about me first, so I have been in the Autodesk channel for a number of years, uh, working for um, a number of resellers, um, now I've been at my machine for just coming up to four years. So um, we are an Autodesk Platinum partner, and because we work with Autodesk very, very closely, we are an expert um, uh, elite specialist for the construction cloud, which uh, is an area which I specialise in, uh, which I'm going to show you today. If you want to connect with me, I'm out there on all the social media channels. I have put my details on the screen there, which you can see in regards to my Twitter handle. If you follow me on Twitter, I post loads of stuff regarding the Autodesk Construction Cloud and other things. Um, I'm also uh, on LinkedIn, so please feel free to reach out. I'm always loving to speak to people uh, and hear about what they're doing and how they're doing things and their issues and how I can help solve those. So like I say, um, we've got a, a packed agenda. Um, I'm going to go through quite a lot of information today. So um, I can't go through everything, that's one thing. One of the main things is we're going to try and cover some key aspects that you guys may want to learn about the Construction Cloud or you may not know today. So first of all, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what Construction Cloud is and help you understand why it's here and why Autodesk have, have got this solution but also how it can help you in your, in your business and your, your journey on your projects. I'll look at some key functionality within the docs environment and the build environment and how the connected workflows can work for you as you need them to work on your projects. So firstly, the Construction Cloud is an application that's built there for all people to access their information no matter where you are. Whether it's you're accessing the information from uh, your machine in the office or collaborative working in the field everything is saved and located through a cloud application which allows you to access that information whether it's a document whether it's a model whether it's you're sharing some um, safety information you're capturing some data from site and sharing that information with the rest of the team on the project whether it be your design team your end client your operator your fabrication uh, organization that you can work with and many others it allows us to work with all those teams in a connected way in a secure manner. So we've got the ability to capture all the information with all the version history that we need and have and uh, we'll be able to access it anywhere, anytime. Whether it's through our web browser or whether it's through our desktop applications that we are going to be editing the information from or whether it's through our mobile app that we have that we can utilise on our phones or our tablets. So one of the things Autodesk uh, pride in, in this application here is it's a connected workflow. So whether it's starting out from inception, uh, working with our design uh, applications from early concept into the full design stages, then working through into uh, manufacturer, but also our supply chain can connect in there with the contractors and subcontractors who may work on the project. But not to forget those people who are going to own and operate that asset, for example a building or some infrastructure, afterwards once it's completed that allows us to take the information and transfer it between all parties on the project and keep it all connected where everyone can access it. Now as part of that, we have a number of solutions in there that help with this. So it helps connect, for example, our design information where we can utilize our desktop applications such as Autodesk Revit, AutoCAD, Navisworks, just to name a few. It allows us to utilize the information by editing it locally but saving the information directly to the cloud. So everyone who's working on the project, who has access to that information, can view it, can see that information, and view it at any point from anywhere. It also has the ability to help us coordinate the information between all the different people, whether it's at the start of a project, for example, estimating you know, the costing and so forth, whether it's looking at quantification as part of that, whether it's looking at, for example, things like clash detection and so forth, and then looking at things like quantification of of, uh, of information that needs to be provided with regards to going out to manufacture. And then whilst we're working on site, we can utilize that data to access all the key information to help us construct, all the information that helps us uh, look after the safety of the people working on site, but also quality control and so forth. 
and then as we need to, handing over that information at the end of a project to the, the teams who are going to be operating the asset itself and the end client. So looking at the overall life cycle of a project. With the Construction Cloud, we have a number of applications, starting off with the core one at the bottom here, Autodesk Docs. This allows us to store information in a cloud-based environment, similar to all the applications out there, whether it's we're just utilising it internally as a data storage, or we're utilising it on our projects to keep all our project information. We can utilise it, for example, as a common data environment where it could be set out in line with ISO 19650. And then all the other design teams, um, subcontractors, contractors, supply chain, whoever may be working on the project can access that information. This then allows us to turn on and select other services. For example, we're not going to go through them in too much detail, but we could utilise BIM Collaborate. We could also utilise Takeoff. But today we're going to be looking at the Autodesk Build application. One thing to note here is when you purchase an application, for example Autodesk Build, you get access to your Autodesk Docs licences as well. The same with Takeoff, you get access to Docs, and the same with BIM Collaborate. If you, for example, have an AC collection, you will already have access to Autodesk Docs to utilise the service. So, for example, you start uh, working on your Revit model or your CAD file in AutoCAD, in whichever flavour you're working in, you can instantly um, set up your Autodesk Docs to save your information in there. That's an easy way to access your information from anywhere, whether you're working from the office one day, maybe working from home another, or you're out on site and you've got internet access to access your files. But also you can share that information with all the parties if you need to, who may have access to that information or those who don't. So one of the key things I just want to highlight, although we're going through build today, I just want to give you a bit of an overview of what BIM Collaborate and Takeoff is. So starting off with BIM Collaborate, this is aimed at our design teams predominantly, where you may be working in a Revit environment where you want to work share that information and coordinate it with other people within your organisation and potentially those outside and also those who will be working in the civil environment, in civil 3D, or in the plant industry with plant 3D, allowing us to have our information in a collaborative environment to help us share with the right information with the right people at the right time. But also those people can see that information as it's shared and choose the information they want to consume and utilise. We can also coordinate that information with all the relevant parties on the project. So looking at things like clash detection, a model review as we need to at any point and coordinate any necessary changes or issues instantly through the application. Again moving on to takeoff this is aimed at quantification so we're looking at 2D takeoffs for our uh, QS's and 3D takeoffs now with our 3D models so we can utilize a model for example we've created in Revit can be shared with that team and then they'll be able to look at quantity takeoffs Let's take an architecture model. We can take off, for example, how many doors there are, how many windows there are, what size are the windows, but so we can work out the quantities and so forth. We can also look at things like, um, from our 2D drawings, our linear and area takeoffs, and even doing a count in the simple ways. But because we've got all the information stored in one environment, we can easily access that information when any changes may happen and update it appropriately. Moving on to the build environment, what we can do here is we can connect the field with our office. This allows us to access and share information instantly with all the parties. Whether you have internet access um, or cellular access in the field, you can capture information and then share it back instantly, you have access. You can also download the information you need whilst on site to review and make sure that you have the right information whilst you're doing your work. So let's have a look at the system itself. And so a little deep dive into what the solutions we have and how we can work with them. Starting off, this is what the construction cloud looks like when you go in. Now I'm the project administrator and the account administrator, so I can go in here and I can create projects from scratch. You'll see all the projects I have access to and actually the accounts I'm working on. We can utilise our uh, subscription to access other projects on other hubs. We can also create project templates. This allows us to automate the process and set up a new project without having to start from scratch. As you'll see, there's a number of ones set up in here. One simply one set up for docs, another set up for docs and build and so forth. As you'll see here, I'm just showing you a new example of a solution that's been updated recently. We now have a published template access point here. 
This allows us to share this with other people when it's ready to be utilised. You'll see at the top here we can select the different services from our projects. We also have the ability to set up things like our folder structure, what forms we may utilise, what issue um, lists we need and so on and so forth. If we do this in our template, it automates that process so we're not having to spend a lot of time at the beginning of a project setting it up. We, all we need to do is add in the relevant information associated with that project and necessary people and then we can get going. You'll see here, I'm going to go and open a project. This is set up as a project CDE. Now we're going to utilise it so we can access the project information. As we've got both build and docs here, you'll see it open up in build initially. We're now going into the docs environment. This allows me to view the information as seen on screen. Now because we've set this up with a whipped area, a shared area and a published area, this allows us to align to ISO 19650 workflows. We can utilise the work in progress area for people to access their information while live on the project. We can also use the shared area to share information around the different parties. But then the published area can be utilised to access contract information or information that we've showed at the end of a project. You'll see here we've put some other folders in there, but again, we can set this up specifically to how the project needs to be managed. With, for example, the handover folder there, which we're going to utilise to make sure we capture that information, for example, with our O&M files and our health and safety files. Sorry, O&M manuals, I'll say. We can also capture things like reviewing uh, transmittals, issues and reports whilst working on here, and control who is actually going to be working in here at any one time. You'll see on the screen we have, on the left-hand side, our CDE project. And on the right-hand side, we have a task team project, so our individuals are working on the project, and in this case, the architect. As you can see, we've just opened up the subfolders, and we have a number of folders set up. And this is where all the project information is going to be stored. As we're working, from our architectural point of view, and this could be other disciplines as well, they've set those up in a very similar manner to help with the process of transferring information across. And what you'll see there is that they'll be working on their files in a local environment, allowing them to edit information wherever they are, save it directly into the cloud, and then people in their team will then be able to look at those files, whether it's just for visual purposes, whether it's to review, whether it's to comment and make any issues. So you'll see here uh, we have the architectural project. We can set up permission-based uh, access. So you'll see here these three people currently are administrators. They have access to the entire project. We have set up um, different roles in here, for example, an architect, an architectural technician, an architectural technologist. We can also add in things like the company. So what this does, it allows us to give access to specifics. So for example, do we want people just to be able to view the files or do we want them to be able to edit? Do we want them to be able to create information, make markups, um, download information and so forth? Or do we want to give them full administration access? If we gave them full access to the main area, they could see everything. If we gave them access to a specific folder or folders, they would have access to that folder and any subfolders within there. It allows them to access the right information they need at the right time. Now, if we do it by, for example, by role, anyone who's assigned, let's say, as an architect, will have access to that area as an architect. And in this case, on the right hand side, you can see it says edit. But if we had, say, for example, an access to a folder specifically for an organisation, Anyone who's added in, who's aligned to that organisation and working for them, will have access to that information in that folder. This allows us to control what information people have access to within the system. Now, as you'll see here, I'm going into this model and I'm going to look at a file. We ha only have two files in here, two Revit models, but we could have many files. As you'll see, we have a version history. You can see the first upload, the second upload and the third upload. This allows us to access and view the files as we've gone in here. We can compare versions as well as we go through. This allows us to take two files and compare the differences between those, whether it's the latest version and an existing version. We also have the ability to see the activity of the file and what's happened. So for example, from initial um, upload or save or publish, you'll see who did it, the date and time. You can also see that Richard here has put this in review and this file is currently in review to be looked at. Um, as we go through the process, that will continue to be updated as and when um, something happens. This allows us to ensure that we know what's going on in the project. To stop any of those uh, issues that we may identify, for example, if someone's made a change and they're saying they didn't, you can go on there and check that they have. But also, 
when those changes were made, you'll know what date and time they were. So it may be, for example, you've made a change, the clients turn around and said, actually, I do not want that change anymore, can we revert back? We can take that existing file and revert back to a previous version, for example. So as we go through, you'll see we have other functionality. For example, we might need to review files. We can select the file or files we need to review and use a digital reviewing process using uh, structured workflows. Starting off, we have one here, which is a one-step approval process. You can see we can go and set it by user, by role, or by company. We can also notify other people to maybe have a site of potential reviews. We can give them a message to say what it is. They will get an instant notification through email, but also in the reviews panel, they'll have a list of all the files they have to review or review sessions they need to follow. You'll see here we just have one file, but we could have multiple. So the user's going in looking at the model. They're seeing that they've uh, had a look through the model and they're making some comments here to say what we need to do. We also have the ability to set what the status is. Are we approving the file? Are we rejecting it? Are we adding comments? These can all added be into the actual file. And then again, making notes so for afterwards, we can always come back and look at records to see what happened and why. We also have the ability to set the status. And you see here, if I hover over, it does give me the actual review number that it was. So if our process is currently going, it will say in review. Also, because we have uh, the different stages we can set, so for example, we can have a review status of uh, one step, we can have one all up to six steps, so it can go through multiple people or multiple organisations, or even group approvals that need to happen. We can also set it, for example, as we're in the work in progress area, as a file is checked and a copy needs to be shared externally, we can always do it where we have, once it's approved, a copy of that file will then be transferred over to your shared environment to then share with the external people as and when. So if you'll see here, we have a great functionality that was introduced last year called Autodesk Bridge. I really do like this. I think it's really a game changer in the way of sharing information. So you'll see here, we can set up a link between two projects in Autodesk Construction Cloud. This could be automatic, or we can do this where we just actually transfer information as and when. So you'll see here, Mark sent over some files here, and it's set to automatic. What that means is, as soon as Mark updates that file in his project, it's going to transfer across. So this is allowing us to transfer information from one project to the next. If I jump into that project, you'll see here, under the shared environment, we have a folder called shared. This folder has that model. That model here is has gone through the process of shared. So it's version three. So every time Mark updates that, it will transfer that model across into the master CDE and place it into that folder. And there you see it. I scroll across, you'll see there's the file and the date it was updated. So our mark hasn't updated that for a while, but the next time it does, it will automatically update in that system. So if everyone has uh, access to that area, we'll be able to see this automatically for us. Now, because it's set up to automatic, the information transferring manually, uh, automatic. If we wish to do this manually, so let's say there's a set of drawings we wish to share, but we only need to share them at a specific date and time, and we want to control that we can set up the same automated process where we're transferring that file, but instead of setting it to automatic, we are physically doing that transfer from project to project, but it's not having to download and re-upload. That process is taken away to save a lot of time and value that, for example, a document controller can spend on other tasks that they need to do. So as we work through, um, we need to publish information so those guys on site can see this. So in the build environment, we can take our information in the files area and publish it to what we call the sheets. What you'll see here is we have the functionality to create a different sets, what we call version sets. This allows us to set up either a new set or we can select an existing set if we have one. These sets can be called whatever you need them to, whether it's a certain um, um, specific job, action, whether it's a status, we can set them. So as you go through, you'll see in here what this is doing. So first of all, I've uploaded four files, but this could be one, it could be a large number. You'll see it's picking an area on the drawing where it's actually selecting the drawing number. Now we need to zoom in and actually find the right place. So you'll see here, I'm just gonna simply draw a box over that. And what it will do, utilizing what we call an OCR scanner, it will extract the information inside that box. And in a second, you'll see on the screen, it will highlight 
the fact that it has taken that information. And there you go. It's easily populated that information in here right now. So it's taken that information directly from the drawing and placed it into here. So it's captured it for us. What you can do as well um, as part of this, we can use the edit at the top here to edit the sheets where it can actually take it from the file name or actually we can put rules in that will actually put specific key information in if required as we're doing this. The next part of this, it goes through after taking the actual sheet name, it takes off the title and we can add tags. So you'll see here on the left hand side again, we need to select the sheets we need to do this because it's automating that process to put in the specific titles we need. So we don't have to sit there and type that in manually, which can take a little bit of time based on all the information you could be uploading. So let's say you've got 15 GAs and 13 um, elevations or sections, it would take time. So again, we go through the same process. We go in here and automate that. So you'll see it's gonna go in, we're going to zoom around to the bottom of the screen now where the title sheet is and it's going to pick the actual drawing title again utilizing a box and extract that data so again it's allowing us to utilize the ocr scanner to capture that information on the screen as you'll see here just like so so literally just saving and applying that that is now done and it will automate automatically fill in that you see on the right hand side we can add tags this is really helpful for example, when you've got a number of sheets in there, you might want to find certain information. For example, we can put in discipline specific. We could also, um, very similar to using the sets, we could set in a specific uh, code that we might want to utilize, or even information that might be on a drawing. Let's say it's a plumbing package, or it's an architectural package, or it's a structural package. We can easily utilize that for searching. And as you can see, in here, we can easily look at the files um, from this point of view and use the filter option to actually access the information and view them either through the web browser or our mobile device. So utilising mobile access, you can see here I have uh, two means to do this. One being a mobile phone, two being a tablet. We can access the files we need on the go. So whether we're out on site or whether we're just on the road and we need to access information instantly. You'll see on the right hand side we have a phone which we're accessing it through. We also have a tablet on the left hand side accessing the same model. So what we do is we can um, download the information to our device and access that information. So let's say we're doing a walk around on site, we can see this information. You'll see here we have uh, our m and &E models with the ventilation information in there. You'll see we're easily walking around looking at the model. We're also uh, moving around to, to see information moving up and down in the models themselves. It gives us the ability to access all the information at our fingertips, and we don't necessarily need to just use 2D information. Because these are Revit models, it can capture information about them. So for example, I can select an element and I can get property information. I can also utilize the section box to make the information I want to see clearer. I can utilize planes again to uh, moving down, up and down floors, for example. I can also um, utilize it to uh, create my issues and things like that if I need to as part of this. So it's got an ability to access all your designs whilst on site, rather than going back into the old school kind of way of printing off, for example, large scale drawings, taking them around site, and then every time getting a new copy of a drawing going on site. You can still capture your 2D information with this, but also your 3D designs as well. Now, as we go through the project, we're going to be capturing lots of information. So in here, I'm going to show you a couple of things that we can capture here. So for example, here we've got forms. So how we would capture this information, whether it's a simple site delivery form like you can see here. So for example, the scaffolding company coming on site and the drivers delivering all the scaffolding. You'll see here, we're just filling out the site delivery form. We're putting in the company, the driver's name, the required information. We're highlighting what it is that they're doing we're populating this information with all the required fields and capturing this data so we know on a specific date or time this is being delivered. It's also being signed by both parties. For example here, the delivery driver is signing this off, but also the site manager is signing it off too as we go through. Capturing all that information in one, lo excuse me, in one location so everyone can see what's happened at a certain date and time. We can also capture photographs as part of this. And you'll see here, whether it's we're taking a photograph of something or we're utilizing any pre-loaded photos that we have and in the system. We can also link this to other parts of the project. 
whether it's documents, drawings, models, um, asset information and so forth. Now because we're doing this, we can utilise the tools in here. Now you can see on the right hand side, we've taken a photograph of some fire extinguishers and we need to put this information in here. So utilising tags, we can add in utilising a list of tags we've already created or add in new tags. So in this case, I'm putting in fire extinguisher. This makes it easier for someone who goes in and looks for old drawings, sorry, old photographs that relate to that subject. Now, as part of this, what uh, the AI does, it has um, some great functionality inside to capture some of the information already. So, for example, it knows where it is with the GPS location, but also it can put some automated AI in there to capture certain information. So, for example, if there's a socket in there, it knows electrical information is in there. If there's a wall in there, it knows there's a wall. So that captures some tags automatically for you. Now, um, that's really helpful to automate that process to rather than someone going in there and manually doing it time after time. As we're moving through our project, lots of things are happening and we need to communicate them. So, for example, we have the ability to request for information, so RFIs. You'll see here, this is someone on site, they're asking a question can we change something? So the design's been done, um, there's things happening on site. Or this could just be the, in the field, sorry, in the office, that people want to make the, um, necessary information changes or ask for information to clarify what they're doing. So in this case, the structure engineer has gone in here and said, actually, can we change the structure of a certain area? Currently, we've designed it for a concrete frame, but we want to change it to a steel frame. So they're asking the question, and they're going to relay that back to the relevant party. So this in here, they're just putting a question in to ask that. You'll see because it's a draft, they're setting it up uh, originally, but then once it goes through the process, that status will change. We can also look at reference files. So what drawings we might want to share, what documents we might want to share, models, or any other information as part of this. Because the request information is captured through the mobile app or the web browser, we can capture as much information as you can see. And because we're referencing this information, it's all captured through the system, so we can see that. Now, as you can see, we've captured information, we've now created that. We're just going to fill out the rest of the data here and then submit it for review. So as you can see, uh, we can easily capture this information as we go along. But the main part of this, because we're submitting this to people in the project, we can identify who the reviewer is. In this case, I'm going to select my colleague, Bianca. I'm also going to select a co-reviewer. So in here, you'll see I'm going to select Richard. I'm just using the search function functionality to select Richard here. We can also specify the date we need the information back by. So you can see I'm just quickly selecting that. And also any other people we might need to know. So for example, I might, I'm going to select the project manager here because it's important that he knows what's going on as well. Once submitted, that will go into the process. They will get notification of this has been submitted and other people who um, uh, may need to be notified can also be accessed if they're added on there as well. So it's capturing the information we need, whether it's on the go in the field or whether it's back live in the office. Taking this a little bit further, because everything happens um, quite rapidly on projects, you can see here we have a model. We've just cut the model down. We've noticed there's an issue here as we get to where the stairs come through the first floor. So utilising the issues function, we've put a pin on screen. This allows us to select a point in the view, now this doesn't necessarily have to be a 3D view, it could be a 2D drawing for example, and we're identifying there is an issue. So we're saying the stir void is missing. We're saying it's a design issue and can someone look at this and please fix the model. You can see here we can assign this to a person, a role, or in this case we're going to assign it to a company, MAM Architects. We're going to apply a watcher, again we're going to notify the project manager that this is happening and we need to change this. To help with this process, we're going to identify the location on site. So whether that's the site, the building, the level in the building on the floor, this could be a space or a room as well. And also the due date and the start date is happening. And any um, further information like the root cause why. We can also reference other information. So let's say we reference a drawing um, or a document, for example. And you can see here we have an activity log which keeps record of everything that's happening. And every time we switch into the model, for example, in this case, or the drawing, you'll see we have the issues on the left-hand side, which someone can go in and switch the status or start looking at the review themselves and adding comments where needed. 
They will get notification of this by email, but if we go into the issues area, you'll see here we have a number of issues. You can see some of the issues have actually been placed on a drawing or a model, but some of the issues have been created and not referenced a file. At the moment, you'll see this issue here has identified incorrect title information on the drawings. So the architects have now gone away because this is in review to rectify that problem. And you'll see the one we're looking at is currently pending. So it's going through the process. And what you'll see here, it's taken us to that location. It's cut the model down specifically to that view. So you'll see where the actual problem is. So we can quickly and easily rectify what we need to do. And once we update the model, we can change the status of that real on the model. And then if someone does another check, they'll see that the model has been corrected. Well, hopefully anyway. So one key thing that a lot of people ask for is being able to report what's happening in the project. You'll see in the report section here we have lots of templates we can utilise. We can create a log at any point as we're going through a project. Now you can see I'm going to select one of the actual um, um, templates here. We're going to do a weekly status report of issues because we need to make sure that issues assigned are getting closed off. We can highlight a filter and this filter does vary. We can set which issues you want to specifically look at. In this case, I've selected all of those. What we're also going to do here is identify and sort by out of uh, overdue. Sorry, We're going to identify this to make sure the most important ones are at the top. When we run this review, we can also set out whether it's just a one time or whether we want to set this as a scheduled report. Now, as you can see, this one is done. If we go over to the right hand side here, you'll see it gives us the ability to select the three dots and download the report. We can also send it to other people if we need to. This is downloaded a PDF report for us, so we can quickly look at and you'll see we have this nice cover page and then we have information shown below. Because this is very early stages on the project, there's very little information in here now. But as the project grows, so does the reports based on the information. So as you can see, we can easily share that information with anyone we need to. If we go over to the templates, now we have a new template. We're going to go in here and set out the schedule. This allows us to set, on a regular basis if we need to, a schedule when things are happening. So on a Monday morning, sorry, Monday, um, yeah, Monday morning at 6 a.m., we're going to set this to run automatically. We're going to get it to notify specific people in the project, i.e. different organisations. And we're going to put a little message in there to notify them of the project information. So they will get a notification each week this has happened and they'll be able to come in and download that as they need to. So as it records it, and you can see here, we're going over to the issues. We can actually do a report on information in here. So for example, I want to just do a quick report today, right now, on the four issues that are in there. So this is now going to go a detailed report as it is. And you can see we can do a few settings as well as part of this. So for example, I have a cover page and so forth. As I run the report, it's going to generate it. Now it will email me if the report's going to take a little while, which this didn't in this, in this case. Again, I can download it into PDF, and you'll see in here we have a nice contents page, which allows me to select a location within the to view specific issues. You can see in here, this has an image from the drawing, but also I can click on that and go straight back into the project and actually view that specific issue in here. Okay, so a quick instant way. This allows me to select and review that information quite easily and quite quickly. As you'll see, the project's moved on a little bit here. We have a few more issues that have been rectified, uh, sorry, set up and actually identified as part of this. And also we've got an RFI one set up as a review. Any reviews that have been voided, you can see then we had the option for that. So what we can do to help automate the process is set out maybe weekly ones that need to be run automatically or ones that we need instantly, we can set up templates where we can literally just go in, select the template, run the report and get the information out. And it helps us capture that data as we need to going through our project quite quickly and easily as we need to. To automate that downtime, it normally would take for people to register that information. As part of each project, we have this insights module. The insights module is a powerful tool which allows us to look at dashboards. As you'll see, we have the project information with address and weather. We have things like RFIs, issues and submittals. And again, this is a very early stage of this project, so you can see it's quite minimal. And as we go through, we can customise these cards by adding other cards we have in there. 
This allows us to select and add other cards on the view, move cards around and display all the information we need. As part of this, we can also go in, not just add the Autodesk specific ones, but any other cards that may be provided from third parties to allow them to place in their information on your cardboard here to see. We also can set up other boards, for example, specific design ones, quality management or safety management, um, as part of this to help just display specific key information that's associated with them. And if we need to, set up any new boards and share them around with other project members so we all see the right information in exactly the same way. Now, because those boards are there, it gives us the ability to show us project specific, co company specific, or even specific to myself. So if I need to know specific project issues just for me, I can turn that on. Now to take that one step further, we have what we call a desktop connect, or a, de um, a data connector, sorry. This allows us to run on a monthly basis if we want to, um, an extract from the project. And this has a data information that's exported out into CSV. We can run it at any time we need to, but it just takes a little bit of time to generate, so you'll get an email notification. Autodesk have very kindly put together a lot of Power BI board templates where you can utilize by downloading the template or utilizing the connection tool to put it in our dashboards. What this does, it allows us to access information and present it in a way that we need to. So whether it's, for example, forms, documents, assets, we have a number of things already set. You'll see here, I've just opened up a Power BI template. I've extracted the information from the, the project and I'm just taking it out of the zip file. And you'll see in a second, it opens up a folder with lots of zip files. Sorry, lots of um, CSV files. I'm now going to transfer this into the project. And what you'll see, it's now generating the information. And what it's doing, it's going to put some nice little boards up here, allowing us to demonstrate what's happening in the project. Whether it's showing you know, a nice graph, or uh, graphical information, I should say, sorry. Or whether it's showing in nice forms so we can see, for example, in this case we're looking at forms, but it could be potentially any issues, um, what are closed, what are, um, are not closed, who we're assigned to and so forth, because we can capture information. Now for you guys out there who may be Power BI experts, you can take that data and do some wonderful things with it outside of the Autodesk default templates you can utilise and really report your information back within your projects and in your organisation. So just to, to finish off here, we've gone through you know, a couple of things in here and there's a lot more in build and other products out there which I can explain to you. But just to highlight, the Autodesk Construction Cloud is here to help connect all teams together on the project and stop working in silos. So whether that's capturing the information in a document management system electronically to control all the different versions you may have, keeping the history of all the existing files so you can see those, working through things like digital approval processes and capturing that information there, sharing comments and markups in one location rather than utilising several different tools. Along with that, allowing us to collaborate with all those different members on the project who may be on, for example, site working on the project, capturing the project's information. Whether it's you want to join up the cost information and look at budgeting and change controls and so forth help with uh, payment applications as part of this with your subcontractors, but then also taking in consideration all that key requirements of a project, looking at quality control and safety, and ensuring that um, all the digital information is captured, whether it's a simple checklist or a sign-off form or a schedule, we can review all that information during our project. And not to forget, as we come to the end of a project, we're going through our commissioning processes capturing all the right information that needs to be handed over to our relevant clients, owner operators and so forth. Making sure we have the right information that they need at the end of the project in the way that they want it, rather than just giving them a box full of information and then walking away. Ensuring that they have all the information throughout the life cycle of their project so they can utilise it. But not to forget that we also have BIM Collaborate and Takeoff that helps bring those designers and people who may need to work on the information during our, throughout the, the stages. And those people who may be looking at costings and quantities and everything like that for tendering or for budgeting as well throughout our project. So having all that functionality and tools all in one place with one single sign-on is only going to help us.
not hinder us. And finally, before I sign off today, what I want to do, and this is something that Autodesk uh, do very, very well here, I believe, is they constantly update the products and services that they have. So with the construction cloud, because it's cloud-based, they can go away, add enhancements, fix any bugs that may have appeared, and listen to what people have said to enhance the solutions going forward. So recently, just a couple of days ago, Autodesk introduced some new functionality to the construction cloud. Now, I'm not going through it right now, so what I will suggest to you is go to the Autodesk Construction Cloud blog, Digital Builder. On there, there are some lovely, great little blog posts that explain to you about the new features and functionality that's in there. One of the ones I'm uh, keen to look at is looking at the assets and project tracking. Um, so I'll certainly be looking at that in the next few days and hopefully um, be able to share my uh, thoughts and, and feelings about those solutions coming out. But one thing I will say uh, is because of this, Autodesk throughout the year are constantly updating this. They've got a big R&D team that are helping develop the software moving it forward. This gives us the functionality to ensure that we have the right enhancements that they need. The tools that functions that we need as users to help manage our projects, work more consistently and more efficiently on our projects. Given this, they will be, they'll be introducing those on a quarterly basis throughout the year to help us improve. Now that may change, but at the moment that's how it works. So what you'll find is, for example, you might finish on a Friday at five o'clock for the weekend, you go home, come in on Monday, there's some nice new features there for you to try out and to work with. Whether it's um, just enhancing the tool it's got today, or making a new functionality in there to enhance. So the building the tools of today, also for tomorrow. So I hope that has been a useful session for you and you've gathered some key information. One thing that I will say is there's so much to cover with the construction cloud. We never have enough time to go through everything in as much detail as what I'd like to. But one thing I will say, you know, if you need any help or guidance or support, my machine are here to help you. Um, I'm one of the technical guys here um, I'm constantly working in this environment all the time, working with many customers and clients all the time. If you need any help, any support, our contact details are on the screen. And again, connect with me through social media, feel free to do that. But one thing that will help you with is your journey and how you need to engage with the software. We're here to help. We're there just to point you in the right direction, look at the right solutions for you, and engage with your teams to help implement that along the way. So again, I hope you found the session really useful. Um, there was a lot to cover in a short period of time and I know I've gone through it quite quickly, but watch out for the future. More information is coming out on the Construction Cloud all the time from Autodesk and we'll be creating videos like this. So thanks very much for your time. Take care.